Do you take responsibility for the chaos that's unfolding? Of course I take responsibility. I'm president, but it was horrible what to see. This week, we're breaking down Biden's border policy. With us to sort through the wave, the recent wave of Haitian uh, migrants and the Biden administration's response to that is Sabrina Rodriguez, who is a Politico national correspondent uh, who focuses on covering immigration issues for us. Let's start with the roots of this wave of Haitian migrants. We've seen thousands of Haitian migrants arriving at the U.S.-Mexico border for the past couple of weeks now. Most of the headlines were, were coming mid last week when there was about 15,000 migrants that were specifically under one international bridge in Del Rio, Texas at a makeshift camp. A lot of them, though, were not actually living in Haiti when they made the decision to come to the United States. They had been living in other countries, Brazil, Ecuador, Chile, since about the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. It's crazy timing because there is so much political turmoil and instability in Haiti at this precise moment. The why it's happening and, and what triggered it is honestly a combination of desperation of, you know, poor conditions that they're coming from and misinformation. Biden earlier this year, you know, redesignated Haiti for temporary protected status. That only protects Haitians that are currently in the United States that were in the U.S. before a certain date. Some people don't necessarily know the nuances of that. So hearing that, you know, Haitians were getting protections in the United States, they thought it would be a good time to come. Hearing on WhatsApp channels, on Haitian social media, hearing some mixed messages about what's happening in the U.S. really put together this moment of thousands deciding to come at once. What we witnessed was worse than what we witnessed in slavery. Cowboys with their reins again whipping black people. There are significant racial undertones in this debate over how to handle this recent surge of Haitian migrants. Well, Haitian immigrants have been treated differently than other migrants for decades. And this is the latest and most egregious example. Very large group of migrants of African origin at our border. And this is the first time I've seen, have you seen people on horseback <laughs> and with reins or whips? Many black leaders have been protesting how these migrants were treated at the border and played a major role in pressuring Joe Biden to speak up for Haitians. There's an argument that they could spread out the 15,000 migrants in processing centers and be able to interview them all, be able to allow them to seek asylum in the United States and, and make their claim. Another is them taking more time to you know, reach agreements with the countries that people were living in before. So instead of deporting people back to Haiti where they don't live anymore and doing the negotiations with Brazil, doing negotiations with Chile, Ecuador to say, okay, we're gonna send more people back there. The 15,000 migrants, they gather in this one place. It obviously creates a major news story. What were the options for the Biden administration um, when they decided, okay, we got to do something here. They have limited options at this point because there's very real capacity constraints. 4,000 have been deported back to Haiti, um, which humanitarian groups are outraged about and saying, how are you sending back people to this devastated country? What was the um, spectrum of opinion about uh, what he did here? Everyone was mad. It was a unanimous <laughs> Republicans, Democrats. It didn't matter. Everyone was fuming last week over this issue. Even Democrats that are huge allies of the president and have tried to give him space to work on immigration without criticizing him had to speak out. I'm pissed. I'm unhappy. And I'm not just unhappy with the cowboys who were running down Haitians and using their reins to whip them. I'm happy with the administration. Republicans were criticizing him, saying, you know, he's allowed this situation to escalate. He's allowed for the conditions to be made for 15,000 migrants to show up at once to the border and that he needs to go back to more Trump punitive policies to deter migration. And we saw moderate Democrats saying, and we warned the administration, we've been telling them that they need to focus more on enforcement and they're not doing it. And then you have progressive Democrats 
that are saying, you know, we shouldn't be using Title 42. The border is closed. We are expelling families. We are expelling single adults. We are still uh, applying Title 42. Uh, we are still sending people away at the border. The Biden administration, by and large, has relied on a Trump era a public health order known as Title 42 to deport and, and kick out the majority of migrants that are arriving at the border. What's next when it comes to um, the Biden administration's uh, immigration policy? Moderate Democrats and Republicans are going to be outraged the day that Biden decides to stop using Title 42. So I'm curious to see who's going to win in that argument. Keeping an eye on which type of policy he's going to be pursuing in the coming months will be interesting. And then, you know, going forward, I, I want to see where, where Democrats land on this, because um, it's not just border policy, but we're seeing right now on the Hill as well what's going to happen with immigration reform, if they'll be able to, to you know, land in reconciliation, uh, legalization, a pathway to citizenship.